I got a $170 casting forge and we're going to try it out for the first time. The range brass I have isn't quite the color I want and neither is this copper. So I'm going to mix the two of them together, cast them into a beautiful ingot to get the perfect color that I like. I got this for about 170 bucks on Amazon. It's got a crucible, it's got a little mold, it's got a pretty nice regulator on the forge with some nice cable. Here the instructions said to heat up the crucible and the mold at 500 degrees for several minutes. My little toaster oven doesn't go that hot, so I just ran it at like 425 for about a half hour. What that does is it takes the moisture out of the crucible and the mold, so that when you go to use it for the first time, it doesn't just explode from the moisture being in there and the extreme heat that you may put to it in the forge. A little bit of assembly with this. It's really straightforward. Okay, we're getting ready to fire this thing up just to give it a little test run. No big deal. We're just going to throw up here on top of the bench and just get a little bit of heat on it, make sure everything's looking good and, and it is what it says it's going to do. All right, these guys have been soaking. They're looking really good. We're going to give it just a little bit of fire. This is where I soak the crucible just for a little bit and then uh, let it cool down. That's a really low temp right there. We'll just set that in there for a little bit. Put the molds up on top. To takes a little bit more moisture out of them. Oh, we got a CO2 alarm going off in the shop. I had to uh, open the doors and turn the vents on a little bit higher. And we're gonna melt down the range brass and mix it with the copper to get a very specific color. I do not want the brass look. I don't want the copper look. I'm looking for something, a goldish bronze look. I cast the copper separate from the brass at first. And I'm gonna measure these out to make sure that I can repeat my formula over and over. And if I wanna make any amendments, it'll be easy to make corrections uh, with the recipe. I want to clean the brass separate from the copper. So I'm gonna melt down the brass first and get it all in its own ingot and skim it and get all the dross off the top and then I will cast the copper ingot separately. You see right there there's some pretty nasty dross coming off the top of that slurry of brass. You want to make sure that your brass is dry. If you pour in anything with any moisture into your crucible that's hot like this, it will explode. I've done this before and it gets very volatile when you introduce water. Kind of a funny story, when I was sorting this brass out, there was uh, 30, maybe 40 live rounds in the brass and I actually found a 22 round, a live round in with this brass and I had to make sure that I took that out before I put it into the crucible because it will ignite. This is hot enough, it will ignite that, that uh, unspent cartridge and that's bad. Once that brass gets up to temperature, it gets very uh, pliable and liquid and it pours out really well. I'll take some of that brass sitting there and clean it up a little bit and I'll throw it back in the pot. There's no sense in wasting it. So now I've got my copper and it's pretty dirty. You know, I got a uh, pipe and wire in there and the pipe's the worst and the dross comes right off pretty good. Okay, now that I've got very clean copper ingots and brass ingots, uh, we've skimmed them, taken the dross off, they look really good. I will measure the proportions and remelt them together and mix everything appropriately. And the next time you see these, they will be the finished ingots. 
I'm gonna give them a little bit of a clean here, a little clean up and buff, uh, so I can check my color. After some trial and error, mixing the copper and the brass together, I got the exact color that I was looking for, and it's duplicatable. I kept track of my measurements, so I can do it again in another casting session, uh, maybe later on this year or 10 years from now if I'd like to. It's all recorded. These copper alloy parts are for, are for uh, knife components. They make great knife fittings. I'll see you in the next video. May the forge be with you. Bye-bye.